to get aboard? Well, you have to bring it up to NASA and they have a team of engineers examine it to make sure it meets all safety regulations and they make you assemble it in front of their eyes so they, can, they know exactly what's on it, what's going on it. If your paperwork says that this is what was on it, that it's really there, that you're not sticking other things in there, mm -hmm. and they'll scrutinize everything. And then that goes in the big payload yes, part of the shuttle? This one flew what they call the back of the bus in the cargo bay of the Space mm -hmm. Shuttle Discovery. Um, and it's flew in a, a small two and a half cubic, cubic foot container, about as big as this right here. So not only did we have to work on the experiments, you also had to construct the uh, container? Yes, it was milled out of a solid block of aluminum uh, done by a gentleman, Joe Ritter. Mm -hmm. And everything must fit inside there. And that had to meet specifications as well? Yes. To be able to, I guess, withstand the stress of launch and all of that? Yes. Okay. Carl, inside the structure, what what was going on? What were the experiments? Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. We had uh, 53 small cuvettes, which had samples of DNA, the specific types of DNA. We had cow DNA, chicken DNA, some salamander DNA. And among the other vials were um, seeds of the plant Arabidopsis, which is a mustard plant. And these were put into a styrofoam packing material and then was placed inside the aluminum structure that John had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, these were flown into the, in the space shuttle payload bay, and when the doors were open, it was exposed to cosmic rays through in, in space. And um, that was the main purpose of the experiment was to get back the DNA to see how badly it was damaged okay. by the cosmic rays. So your hypothesis going in was that the cosmic rays would have an effect yes. on DNA. Yes. The, the ones that were, not, the seeds would, since they're in the seeds themselves, have the ability to fix themselves because they're within the cell mechanism itself. The ones, the other DNA, the chicken, salamander, and all, that was just plain DNA in a solution and it had no way to fix itself. And that was the experiments to see how the plant seeds fix themselves and how the, you know, compare the two. Okay. So they were exposed for how long was exposure? Do you, do you I, I, I forget the long, how long the flight was. It was probably eight to ten days. Oh, okay. So they were immediately, constantly exposed. Yes, immediately. Whole, as, they, oh, okay. as soon as they get into space, they open the payload doors. And All right. Just so that, the, yeah, the exposure was for, for that entire period yes. of time. Um, what happened when the material, the DNA, came back, when the shuttle came back? Kind of tell us what went on sure. from there. Well, the first thing we did is we prepared the DNA that was in the solution to run uh, through a process called electrophoresis, which literally means pulled by elec um, electricity. And the other seeds were sent to be planted and grown and watched and, and ex pretty much to see if they mutated. I guess a monster plant would come out of them or nothing. Mm -hmm. or, um, well, the basic, what electrophoresis is, is what this device is, is you place the DNA in a gel slab, which sits in the middle here, mm -hmm. and which also sits in a solution. And the DNA is um, negatively charged, and you place a current through both sides of this, and the gel acts like a sieve or a mesh, mm -hmm. and the bigger particles of DNA are pulled through. The smaller ones, moving at a faster rate, move t farther through the gel. And mm -hmm. that would give us an idea of how, how broken up the DNA was. So if the DNA hadn't been exposed to cosmic rays, hadn't gone at all, what would happen? Well, there's always, we're constantly, yeah, as we're sitting here outside, we're constantly being exposed to radiation, cosmic, okay. uh, not specifically com cosmic radiation, but uh, UV light and stuff like that. So there's always some sort of breaking going on, in order, but okay. since there, it's, it's in your body cells, it can be um, fixed. Mm -hmm. most, we'll, most of the time. And we're also protected by our atmosphere. Yes. Right. Yes. So you'd expect that on Earth there'd be very little moving across, yes. very little small mm -hmm. pieces, but that you anticipated that because of the cosmic uh, exposure that there would be more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And what, what happened? What, how did amazingly, it, are, are you still working or do you have conclusions? Amazingly what we learned is how durable our DNA was. Um, the DNA that was in the solution would hardly had any effects. It was, we were quite surprised. 
Yeah. Uh, that was quite interesting, which leads to more questions, of course. Yeah, sure. Now, was all the analysis done here, or did you have, uh, did you work with other sister institutions? Other universities were yes. involved, uh, Texas A&M, mm -hmm. uh, Brevard Community College. Yes. Texas A&M okay. was sent two-thirds of the DNA, and we had the other third. I see. And uh, they came up with the same conclusions. So. Oh, so, so that was part of the design mm -hmm. to get uh, the data analyzed yeah. at separate spots. We also had a set of DNA left here as a control, which we kind of set through the same temperature variations and stuff like that and to compare it to the DNA that was sent up in space. Yeah. Very good. John, back to you. The, how was the structure? I mean, did, did you have any problems with you know, with uh, this, not, I mean, not the experiment itself, but, but now that you flew it and you anticipated and all that, did everything go as planned, as far as you know? Uh, well, I guess the whole part of the experiment was you don't really know how it's going to go or if it's going to go as planned, if you have a plan. Um, but it went very well. It went smooth. Okay. What kinds of things uh, did you guys learn? Uh, I mean, what, I mean <laughs> not the experiment, mm -hmm. but as students, as, as uh, guys having professional ambitions? Uh, yeah, well, being around the NASA atmosphere certainly raises your enthusiasm. And to have something that you say that I was a part of, that flew on a space shuttle, I was a part of that, yeah. is really amazing. Yeah, like John yeah. said, the biggest thing is the encouragement. It's just, you're around that atmosphere, and you're like, wow, this is, this is people do this for a living. You know? And yeah. it's possible. Yeah. You know, here That's I am doing it. Very, it's possible. Yeah, and it's happening right now and the time right, you live yeah. in and the whole thing. It's yeah, really right. exciting. We'll explore some of this right after the break. You're watching Community Connection. I was 42, going bald, getting bored. My wife said, take a night class. I'm thinking, school, <laughs> that's scary. Then I saw the BCC catalog and said, that's it. Tomorrow, I take my first solo flight. Bored? I don't think so. Time to broaden your horizon? Whether it's a new career or just for fun, BCC can help you take off. Registration is going on now. Want to go? Got a call. Broward Community College, opening doors to a brighter future. I wanted to be a nurse since I was six, but I was a little afraid about moving away to go to college. So when I found I could get my degree and still live at home, I registered at BCC the next day. Now I'm a nurse with a good job. Gracias, BCC. An associate degree from BCC can put you to work in just two years. Learn the skills you need to get the job you want. Registration is going on now. Want to go? Got a call. Broward Community College, opening doors to a brighter future. Welcome back to Community Connection. Our topic today is our space program and what some BCC faculty and students are doing in that program. John, before the break, we were talking about the mission that flew back in June of 98. Uh, but you have a new project. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, this is it right here. It's called TAMSI, which stands for Terrestrial and Atmospheric Multispectral Explorer. I'm, I'm sure. Say that again. It's TAMSI, which okay. is Terrestrial and Atmospheric Multispectral Explorer. Okay. And this is the structure of the payload. And here we have aircraft-grade aluminum. And our experiments, the top is for our optical experiments, our chemical and DNA experiments, and our battery box and our electronics will go down here. So this is, is this a mock-up or is this actually the one you're building to fly? This is what will fly eventually. Okay, all right. Carl, tell us about a couple of the experiments that, that are gonna go in this structure. Sure, well on the second shelf there, as uh, John said, there's gonna be three chemistry experiments. There's gonna be one DNA experiment and two uh, crystal growth experiments. And um, that's, the, the two crystal growth experiments are going to be um, tartaric acid, I think, and um, I, forget the, I forget the second one. And they are to but grow crystals? Yes. And this probably yeah. has to do with the weightless environment? Yeah, it was, but without gravity, the uh, crystals grow in a more pure, uniform fashion than in, they would down, down here. Does the DNA experiment relate at all to it's, the one you did last time? It's essentially the same thing, but we're doing it again just to see you know, the more times you do it, the better you can see if it was just an odd fluke that it, we didn't have any damage the first time. So we do it again, and this time we get damaged, and then we can say, well, something must have happened. Okay. Or, yeah. That's in the middle? Yes. What, what's going on the bottom? The bottom is uh, our battery pack. It's pretty much what's going to supply all the electricity to the, the second shelf and the top shelf experiments. 
now what does the electricity stimulate crystal growth what do you need electricity in the middle one for for the two of the chemistry crystal growth experiments there's actually going to be we need a mixing element where the there's going to be baking soda and citric acid that's going to mix and produce carbon dioxide that induces the crystals to grow so you need that to move pretty much that's it okay all right John what goes on top well, on the top shelf, we have a few uh, remote sensing uh, experiments to look back at the Earth, because the shuttle is going to open its bay doors, and it's going to be pointed down at the Earth. And we're going to use, uh, this is one of it that's going to go on. It's a telescope that's going to be mounted somewhat like this. And the light will come out here, and it'll be recorded on uh, film, normal 35 millimeter film. And what we're going to look for is, uh, Vegeta uh, vegetation characteristics, uh, phytoplankton in the oceans, and aerosols, the uh, tiny particles in the atmosphere, so we can get good uh, size estimates of aerosols. Explain that to me again, John. Uh, you're going to have this telescope set up so it's pointed back at Earth? Right. And it's going to be picking up, what kinds of things will it put on the film? It'll put light. It'll pass through what's called an interferometer, which basically, it splits a beam of light and it makes it go different paths, and then it it's recorded. It records the two different paths of light, and then from that pattern, you can extract certain data out of the light to uh, certain characteristics of what you're looking at. Yeah, much much like a dusty room with a flashlight. Oh, okay. How it, how it really illuminates when there's a lot of dust in the room, and if there's not a lot of dust in the room, it doesn't. That's how. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, in both cases. Or where is the analysis, what kind of analysis, and where is it going to be done? Are you going to do the same split analysis with a couple different institutions? Uh, what's going to be the approach? Uh, yeah, right now a few of the same institutions are involved, Texas A&M, uh, Brevard Community College, and mm -hmm. ASPR, which ASPR. is the, the Association of Small Payload Researchers. Okay. Um, and it'll, it's a collaboration, joint, mm -hmm. joint effort. And same, I guess, same yes, thing yeah. with, with, mm -hmm. with the other two? Mm -hmm. Uh, where are you at what stage? Obviously, you've got this structure. I mean, when are you going to be ready? Well, we don't have a flight date right now. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, there's still a lot of technicalities to be worked out, such as what experiments are going to fly and what aren't. Uh, that still needs to be worked out. And I would say we're about the 60% mark. We're about 60% there. Okay. Carl, how many students are involved in this with, with uh, faculty, and how many faculty? I mean, what kind of group do you have working on this? Well, the students are pretty much depend every semester. There's different students that come and go. There's this core group of students that are always involved. But uh, I'd say anywhere from uh, depends on the semester. Once again, there's six of us to 20 of us. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody, anybody who's a student at BCC can you know, get involved. So this is really, although you may have met the professor in class. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk in the next segment with the professors, but uh, this becomes really something you're doing outside of class. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. And, and something that uh, I know with work schedules and other class schedules you have to make time for. Mm -hmm. uh, it must be a pretty high priority, and it looks like you guys spend a lot of time because you it's certainly... The rewards are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. are great. Yes, very yeah, much. It really, it really is exciting for you, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Where um, has this cause you to think about your career goals, where, where you might uh, look oh, at Oh yeah, after bit. being around all the NASA engineers and just being in the atmosphere really, really is enthusiastic and I, again, I didn't think things like this were possible and here I'm working with engineers and mm -hmm. staying in contact with them, not just seeing them once every four months or five months, I mean emailing with them and really getting their personal insight on things. Yeah. and. It's great. It makes the whole the whole thing tangible, and it's like movie, meeting movie stars or something. I yeah. guess you could say it's sure. it's wow. These people are real. They they really do this for a living, and it's just it's very yeah. encouraging. I'm sure. Now, Carl, what direction do you plan to go uh, when you finish at BCC? Are you uh, planning I'm, to transfer in what field? Sure, I'm going to be transferring to FIU, and I'm going to be uh, working on my bachelor's in biochemistry. Okay. Now, well, in order to, if it's going to be something with space program, is that something you'll need to go on and get a graduate degree? Yeah, eventually I'll be getting my PhD. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's research that, is... That's my primary goal right now. Yeah. 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 How about you? Uh, same thing. Uh, it seems to be a PhD dominated field. Yeah. So that's where I'm headed. Yeah. 
What kinds of things, I know the space program's undergone a lot of change. Uh, I mean, these kinds of programs really reflect some of that change uh, up there. Uh, less military dominated, more into research and orientation. Any perspective you get as, uh, as, you, as you've been up there, is it becoming a more civilian research oriented environment? Fortunate for us, it has, yes. so it seems. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it uh, seems like they're catering to getting institutions and young people to come in. They want them. They want to. Yeah. yeah, that's what this whole pro the whole gas program is about. It's sure. It's getting, getting people who think they can never be involved in something like this involved. And well, I think also, as, as we're going to talk in the next segment, this is an important aspect because of uh, trying to broaden the uses of the space program. Uh, for more civilian uses and more research-oriented uh, uses. Yeah, right. Okay. That's quite exciting. <laughs> yeah, it really is exciting. And, and you two are to be commended for uh, not only your enthusiasm, it's obvious uh, here uh, for this, but the good work you're doing Thank you. uh, Thank you. and helping to put BCC, so to speak, on the map. I don't know if you could see it through your uh, spectral photometer or whatever that was <laughs> that you talked about earlier. But uh, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Community Connections. I work a computer at my job, but I didn't know the World Wide Web from a cobweb. With two kids and a husband working nights, where was I going to learn? At BCC, that's where. They have night classes and childcare. Now my job has a future. What about you? Don't let the world pass you by. BCC has a campus near you with outstanding professors, flexible schedules, even childcare. Registration is going on now. Want to go? Got a call. Broward Community College, opening doors to a brighter future. Welcome back to Community Connection. In the first two segments, we talked to some students who are involved in BCC's program working with Kennedy Space Center. And now we're going to talk to a couple of faculty, the primary faculty, in fact, who are working uh, with these students and working with the Space Center. Professor Eric Ackerman, welcome, Eric. Thank you. And Professor Orlando Branley. Good to see you, Orlando. Thanks. <laughs> Eric, let me ask you, we, when we were listening to the students, they talked about the, uh, the shuttle projects, both the one that's flown and the one that's upcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also talked about their perspectives as students and were very enthusiastic about the opportunity. What's it like for a faculty member? What, what kind of reflections do you have on this kind of involvement? Well, probably one of the best uh, reasons to participate in a project like this as a faculty member is that you get to apply some of, the, some of the disciplines that you've learned. So you can apply them not just in a teaching capacity, but also in a practical capacity. And it's, it's fantastic when you get to interface with other engineers at NASA and other organizations, Boeing Group, um, and other faculty um, in various different disciplines. And your, your role for me as an engineer is as an engineer, not as a faculty member, but as an engineer. And the students get to see uh, the actual role that, if, if they want to pick the engineering field, what would be the role of an engineer in this project. So yeah. when we worked on this payload, we worked on it together as a cross-discipline approach and engineering issues were referred to my group and, and my group of students and the other scientific issues were regrouped to Rolanda Branley's group and uh, the integration together is a team approach which is going to be at any large engineering organization. It's not going to be one person, it's going to be multiple people together. So there's some career modeling from your right. perspective at the professional level too. Orlando, Definitely. same sort of thing? Yeah, I think I have to concur with Eric. Uh, this uh, set of projects really has uh, opened up a whole new perspective for uh, faculty at BCC. And I think we're seeing the yeah. effects uh, uh, beginning to take root just right here on our central campus as well as another uh, of the uh, camp high. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we have several other research groups already springing up. And they were there, uh, but they feel a certain uh, camaraderie knowing that, hey, uh, some biology professors can work on something and they can collaborate with professors in the physical sciences and maybe their work will end up in, on the shuttle, such as in the case of yeah. our DNA research and so on. Well, you guys have kind of been pioneers in another way because you've been working not only in interdisciplinary ways here on our faculty, but working with some other faculty at other institutions. Right. 
And my understanding, Rolando, is that that's now going to be formalized more so that uh, there's a, a real link, okay. formal link, between uh, government, uh, education, and, uh, and the uh, space providers, the contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm glad you asked about that um, because uh, we're very proud that BCC is going to be a charter member of the Florida Space Institute. Mm -hmm. And the Florida Space Institute is a fairly uh, young organization. It's been around for uh, approximately two years uh, under the guidance of University of Central Florida. And uh, now we're taking a step forward with actually um, putting our dreams on the, uh, on the playing table and saying we are going to bring uh, satellite construction to the state of Florida. A lot of people are not aware that they're up to this date there has never been a satellite constructed in Florida mm. and that's quite amazing and uh, obviously it's an industry that we want and uh, we want to be part of it we want to make sure that community colleges have uh, a stake in that. So the, the kinds of experiments, the kinds of research that uh, could be expanded, could be brought more to our universities and community colleges actually can have an economic benefit to the state as well because more actual fabrication if that's the right term, yeah, we'll that's be correct. Down here in Florida. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, approximately uh, $4 billion of uh, uh, the state economy belong directly to uh, launch costs. And right now, all of that economic impact is directly tied to launch operations, not to the construction of satellites. And there has been a loss in the several over $100 million per year over the last X number of years. So. Florida is slowly losing that part of the economy to the rest of the com of the competing world, yeah. not just to the United States. Yeah, and that's right. It is really world stage now. It's not that's right. just Texas or or California or somewhere somewhere else. Every time that beeper goes off, or you use that cell phone, or you watch uh, some special television program, there are satellites involved. Every time you get your weather, there are satellites involved. There is a real industry there, and we want that industry here in Florida, and we want. Uh, the educational institutions to be able to be right there providing uh, the best education possible to have a, an educated workforce. And the Florida Space Institute, I think, is, is our opportunity to bring this uh, kind of worldwide attention to, to Florida. You know, it seems like the timing's right, too, for another reason. And uh, the space station is being put together mm -hmm. now and will be flown over the next couple of years as it gets completed and largely flown out of Kennedy Space Center. That's right. Uh, but that creates, uh, once that is operational and as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's going to create more opportunities for more economic activity in space. That's correct. Uh, and it seems like if we have the infrastructure in space, we may be able to take advantage of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And we, uh, um, as a matter of fact, have been planning with the Association of Small Payload Researchers mm -hmm. uh, trying to set aside educational um, payload space aboard the space station and this uh, uh, these dreams that we have here with our um, small payloads and so on will eventually become uh, larger payloads as a matter of fact BCC right now is participating and trying to put a grant proposal together to NASA to develop new materials uh, crystalline type materials that will be uh, of use for solar power in space and uh, Hopefully they will fly on space station, and it's a long ways ahead. But you got to start planning now because yeah. we didn't get to the moon in one day. Well, I know Rolando's working directly with that, Eric. But how does that sound to you as a faculty member who's involved? Do you see maybe the opportunities widening? Uh, definitely. I, I, I there's no better way to integrate material, course material, uh, lectures, and real life situation than having students actually be able to see and look up and say, here's part of a project we've worked on, and it's going to be in the space station, or it was on a shuttle mission. And it, it really allows the students, like you've heard from the previous sessions, to really set their limits to infinity. I mean, once you've ca accomplished this, um, especially as also a faculty member, working with those students, it's very rewarding when you hear students here and, and remember that they're community college students, and they could compete at the same level to any major university in the country would love to have the two students that were sitting here working on those types of projects in 
large uh, scientific refund, you know, research labs that are heavily funded, they would love to have that. And, and they started here with us working on a project, and this is just the start sure. of an evolution of something that will keep on going, and with many institutions involved, and, and Broward Community College being a very special institution to being involved with this whole project, mm -hmm. there's no limit to where this can go. Yeah, that, that really is exciting. It raises the other specter, which is uh, if we get into fabrication, all kinds of uh, technical jobs mm -hmm. that, that could be related sure. to that as well. Well, I thank you on behalf of all of us here at the college for your leadership with these students. You guys are doing a great job. Their enthusiasm is obvious. And uh, so thanks for, for your great work here at the college. You've been watching Community Connection. Visit us next time with our uh, interesting topic of uh, interest not only to the college but also to the community. And in between time, visit our website. See you then.